Once upon a time, in a little cottage in the countryside, there lived a nanny goat and her seven little kids. The kids always played happily together, and their mother, the nanny goat, cared for them and loved them with all her heart. Each morning, the mother goat would have to go out to fetch food from the meadow. Before she left, she would always give her kids a warning. Play nicely while I'm away. She would say, Always bolt the door and never ever open it to strangers. You'll know that it's me when you hear my song. Unbolt the door, my little ones, it's mother, can't you see? I brought you milk for breakfast and cheese for your tea. You see, there was a sad and very hungry wolf who lived in the forest close by. Given the chance, he would harm her little ones. She worried that he might even try to eat them. We will do as you say, Mummy, said the eldest kid. We will only answer the door when we hear your song and we are sure that it is you. We promise, added all the rest. With that, their mother was satisfied and left for the meadow to fetch them food. They were good kids, and she trusted them to do as she had asked. Meanwhile, in the forest close by, the wolf was on the prowl. He had not eaten for days and was very hungry. He watched the nanny goat leave the house and made a plan. If I pretend to be the mother goat, he thought, those kids might let me in, and then... The wolf licked his lips and set about his plan. He walked up the path and knocked at the cottage door. My dear little kids, it is your sweet mother here with food for you to eat. Please unbolt the door and let me in. Then sing us your song, mother dear, replied the eldest kid. The wolf tried to sing, but he knew neither the words nor the tune. Go away, the kids shouted. You are the wolf because you have a gruff voice. You are not our mother because she has a soft and gentle voice. My dear little kids, it is your sweet mother here with food for you to eat. Please unbolt the door and let me in. Our mother always sings a song to us when she comes back. Which song should I sing for them, girls and boys? When the mother goat returned, the wolf hid in the bushes. He listened carefully to her song and saw the kids open the door to her. The kids told their mother about the wolf. You wise little ones, she said as she hugged them close. Never ever unbolt the door to a stranger. That evening the wolf visited the blacksmith and forced him to make a steel collar. This collar, when tightened, made his voice much higher and softer. The blacksmith didn't want to make it, as he thought the wolf was up to one of his tricks. But the wolf threatened to eat him if he refused, and the blacksmith was afraid. The following morning, he tightened the collar and swallowed a large spoonful of cough syrup. This made his voice soft and gentle, just like the nanny goat's voice. Then he waited behind the bushes until he saw her leave for the meadow. As he walked down the path towards the cottage door, he practiced singing the song in a soft and gentle voice. He knocked at the door. My dear little kids, it is your sweet mother here with food for you to eat. Please unbolt the door and let me in. Then sing us your song, mother dear, replied the eldest kid. The wolf sang. Unbolt the door, my... 
uh, uh, little ones, it's mother. Can't you see? I've brought you milk for breakfast and cheese for your tea. That sounds like our mother, said the youngest kid. No, that is not our mother. Those aren't the words our mother sings, said another. And as he looked out of the window, he saw two brown paws resting on the windowsill. It is the wolf. Oh no! They all shouted. Go away, Mr. Wolf! You are not our mother, because she has white feet. The mother goat soon came back home from the meadow with the milk and cheese. As they all tucked into their breakfast, the little kids told her that the wolf had visited again. I'm very proud of you all, she said. You did just as I'd asked and didn't unbolt the door. You are the best kids in the world. But as she kissed them all, she was worried that the wolf might return the following day. So she decided to ask a favor of the little bird who lived in the eaves of the cottage. She would ask the little bird to watch over her little ones and warn her if they were in any danger. That evening, the wolf visited the miller and made him give him a bag of white flour. The miller didn't want to give him the flour, as he thought the wolf was up to one of his tricks. But the wolf threatened to eat him if he refused, and the miller was afraid. I need a sweet voice. That sounds like a mother goat. Do I, blacksmith? Make me a high voice. I want to sing songs as beautifully as the mother goat does. I don't teach singing. I make things out of metal. Blacksmith, make my voice soft and high. Why do you need that? I'm going to sing to the animals in the forest. And make them happy. But I'm not a singing teacher. I make metal objects. So, make me a tight collar. Making a collar is not an easy task. Come back tomorrow, and I'll start it then. That will be too late. Make it now, or I'll eat you up. Please don't do that. Can you find the horseshoes, children? I will make the collar right now out of some horseshoes. When morning arrived, the wolf was hiding in the bushes, waiting for the nanny goat to leave. He had thought of another plan to trick the kids into thinking that he was their mother. This time, he was ready. He watched and waited. When he saw the nanny goat leave, he made his way down the path towards the cottage. His brown forelegs and hooves were covered in white flour. As he reached the door, his tummy rumbled. He was beginning to feel very hungry indeed. He knocked at the bolted door. Knock, knock, knock. My dear little kids, he said in a soft and gentle voice. It is your sweet mother here with food for you to eat. Please unbolt the door and let me in. Then sing us your song, mother dear. Replied the eldest kid. The wolf had practiced the song and sang in his sweetest voice. Unbolt the door, my little ones. It's mother, can't you see? I've brought you milk for breakfast and cheese for your tea. The kids looked through the window and saw the white, flowery feet of the wolf, and were tricked into thinking it was their mother. Yes, it looks and sounds like. Mother, said the little kids. Then we must unbolt the door, said the eldest. They slid back the bolt, and the door flew open. Just imagine their horror when the kids saw not their gentle, sweet mother, but a fierce and hungry wolf. The kids screamed and tried to hide. The little bird, on hearing the noise.
boys looked through the window and saw the wolf chasing the kids around the room. I must warn their mother, he chirped, and flew straight to the meadow to fetch her. Sadly, by the time she arrived back home, there was no sign of the wolf, nor any of her precious little kids. All that was left was a mess of broken crockery and furniture. The nanny goat sat down and began to cry. Suddenly, she heard a tiny frightened voice coming from the oven. I'm in here, Mummy, hiding. The mother goat quickly opened the oven door and out jumped the youngest kid. She hugged and kissed and squeezed him tight. Where are your brothers and sisters? She asked. The wolf. The wolf. Is all the trembling little kid could say, and she pointed to the door. At that moment, the little bird flew in and chirped that the wolf was asleep at the edge of the forest. They rushed to the forest and found the wolf sleeping under a tree. He was snoring loudly. His huge tummy was rumbling, and something was tumbling about inside. Good heavens! cried the nanny goat. My little kids are still alive. The wolf has swallowed them whole. as if nothing has happened. Oh, I am so full. Oh, I am going to sleep all afternoon. I couldn't protect my kid. The big bad wolf has eaten all my brothers. I only escaped because I hid in the oven and he couldn't find me. Nanny Goat made a plan. She asked the youngest kid and the little bird to fetch some scissors, a needle and some thread from her sewing basket. They went as fast as they could and as soon as they returned she set to work. Within seconds she had snipped a hole in the wolf's tummy and out jumped all the missing kids. They were a little shaken but happy to be safe and alive. Shush now, she whispered to them. Quickly, fetch me the biggest stones you can carry. Taking the stones, she laid them gently inside the wolf until he was full to the top. Then she took the needle and thread and neatly sewed his tummy back together again. All this time, the wolf stayed fast asleep, snoring loudly. When the wolf woke up, he had no idea what had happened to him. He thought that the stones were the kids he had swallowed earlier. Oh, I have a terrible tummy ache, he groaned. He tried to get up, but the stones were so heavy he could neither sit nor stand. Oh dear, I should never have eaten those kids. And now I shall die here from my greed. Won't somebody help me? Back at the cottage, the nanny goat and her seven little kids were safe and warm and preparing a supper of bread and cheese. Outside, they could hear the groans of the dying wolf crying for help. They felt sorry for him and thought that he had only done this wicked thing because he had been so very hungry. So they went to visit him and he was surprised. The mother goat looked down on him stones away from you. Will you promise never to harm any of us ever again? I'm sorry I did this terrible thing, but I was so very hungry. The sad wolf whimpered. I promise that I'll never do it again as long as I live. Can he be trusted to keep his promise? Asked the eldest kid. 
The mother goat thought hard. We shall have to wait and see, she replied. So the nanny goat took away the stones and invited the wolf to supper. From that day onwards, they were friends. They lived together peacefully forever after. I feel guilty about what I've done. It won't happen again. Let's live in peace. Very well. I will share some of my cakes with you. But you must promise never to frighten my little kids again.